Hello everyone. Today I'm so so happy, and I hope you're happy too. You know, kids, you can easily become very happy just by thinking about nice things, like your favorite food, a nice holiday gathering, or even by remembering someone who loves you very much. But you know what? You can also become quite sad if you think about sad things. So try not to do that. It's so much better to think about happy thoughts. One of the hardest things we will ever experience in our lives is loss. We may lose a pet, or someone we love, or the chance to do something. We may even feel loss for something we've never been able to have before. These losses cause feelings of intense sadness over a period of time. We call this feeling sorrow. One woman in the Bible who experienced sorrow was Hannah, the mother of Samuel. For many years, she carried a lot of grief and despair because of a family problem that she had to face every day. Let's hear what she has to say about her experience. Hi, kids. My name is Hannah, which means full of grace. I am so happy now because God has answered my prayers. But it wasn't always like this. Many years ago, my husband Elkanah and I were so sad because we couldn't have children. You know, the people in Israel think that it's a punishment from God if you can't have children. That's why many men marry a second wife. Just like what Abraham and Sarah did, I'm ashamed to say so, but my dear husband and I repeated the same mistake. We didn't trust God enough to solve our problem for us. No,、nope, we tried to solve it ourselves. So Elkanah married Penina, but our problems became even bigger. Because Penina had several children, and she would often laugh at me, because I didn't have any. Every day she mocked me. Can you imagine? I became sadder and sadder. You know, kids, disobedience never brings happiness. Instead of trying to change our situation by seeking happiness. On our own, we should be content with what God gives us, and trust Him with the desires of our heart. I was sad because I didn't have any children, but if I had given my problem to God instead of trying to fix it myself, I would have avoided so much sorrow in my life. You see, it was only when I fully surrendered myself completely to God that I finally felt free and happy. Do you know when that happened? I'll tell you. One day, I went to the sanctuary to pray. I cried and gave my sorrow to God in prayer. I begged God to give me a son, and I also promised that I would give that son back to God to serve Him for the rest of His life. The high priest Eli saw me praying. But he wasn't used to seeing people pray with such deep emotion. You know, Eli's sons often drank alcohol, and they would come to the temple drunk. Can you believe it? So naturally, Eli thought I was drunk too. I explained to him that I was praying, and you know what? God spoke to me through him. Yes, Eli told me to go home in peace. I was so happy. I accepted God's will in my life, and I knew God would give us a son. I wasn't sad from that moment on. A year later, I had my little baby Samuel, and with him came even greater joy. All this happened after I fully trusted God. Elkanah was a descendant of Korah, a Levite from the house of Kohat, who was punished by God for rebelling against Moses and Aaron. The fact that Hannah's family was closer to the sanctuary didn't mean that she was free of problems. She too needed to trust God and give her problems to Him. 
Hannah was helpless in her situation, but she was not hopeless. Penina, the other wife of Elkanah, was jealous because Elkanah loved Hannah, and he treated her with much love, as if she had many children. Penina thought that she should be the favorite wife because she had children, so she was mean to Hannah. Penina humiliated Hannah until she couldn't take it any longer. Penina's behavior shows how someone behaves when they are not converted. She was proud. Jealous, mean, and judgmental. You know, it was the fruit of the flesh. It's impossible for anyone like that to find peace and happiness. On the other hand, the life of Hannah shows the fruit of the spirit. Hannah was a humble, loving, and patient woman. When Penina taunted Hannah, she didn't take revenge. She didn't complain or raise her voice. Instead. She took her heartache to God. God listened to her and gave her a son. Hannah had great faith, and after receiving the happy answer to her prayer, she fulfilled her promise and gave that happiness back to God. When Samuel was old enough, Hannah brought him to the sanctuary to be educated and raised in the temple. In time, he became one of the greatest prophets and judges that the people of Israel ever had. The name Samuel means God listens or listen to God, and in his name and life, there's a great parallel to Jesus. Both Jesus and Samuel were born through the providence of God. They were both dedicated to God before they were born. Samuel was a priest. Prophet and judge who interceded for the people of Israel. In the same way, Jesus, a prophet, judge, and high priest, is now interceding and judging God's people in the heavenly sanctuary. Both Samuel and Jesus were chosen directly by God without being descendants of Aaron. So, kids, if you're sad about something that happened, or if you're facing a lot of stress because of problems at home, remember that you can talk to God and that He will listen to you. The best thing that you can do is give your problems to God in prayer. Don't carry it with you everywhere. Trust that Jesus will solve it all for you, and always think about the good and happy moments you have experienced. Remember, happiness comes from within, but only when God is in our heart. May God bless you, and see you next week. Goodbye.